becomes some, such an ominous sound now when you hear that. <laughs> Should have said that before the recording. Welcome everybody for, for, for the 2021 uh, TCC Undergraduate Research Symposium Information Session. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate your interest. We're glad that you're interested in, in undergraduate research here at TCC. Hopefully this will give you some information to get started with your own research, with your own abstract to submit and be able to present at the symposium. Uh, I'm Richard Murgo. I'm Dean for Behavioral Social Sciences and Education. I co-chair this committee along with Tracy. Tracy, I'll let you introduce yourself as well as the others who are here from, from the council. Hi, I'm Tracy Woodard. I'm the Dean of the Communications and Humanities Division at TCC and the co-chair of the Undergraduate Research Symposium. I'm Kelly Hearn, faculty librarian at TCC. I'm Dan Benet, I'm faculty in English. And Dr. Gordon's going to be joining us a little later. She's our STEM program coordinator. And I'm Dr. Saldani. I'm a history professor. Thank you, everyone. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, uh, the way this sort of got started and it was Dr. Woodard and I started doing this actually in 2018. Uh, I had a very good friend for a very long time at BSU, who is my counterpart, he's Dean of Social Sciences, uh, Dr. James LaPlante. When, even when we were first starting out as professors, he used to brag about and, and rave about undergraduate research. He told me how rewarding it was and how, what a benefit it was. Well, a few years ago, Tracy came to TCC from BSU. I knew she knew James very well. And I knew she was very, very active in their undergraduate research symposium. And I thought, you know, we thought this was a great time to, to bring it here to TCC. It, we, we had incredible support from our administration, from our faculty. The foundation helped us to fund it. As you're going to see, the importance of undergraduate research is incredible. Most of our students transfer to four-year institutions at TCC. And of those, most of them transfer to FSU. It's very, very competitive. Four-year universities want undergraduates to have research already in place. They want them experience in being able to present it, and they want to have experience in being able to do that research. It's incredibly beneficial to the students here. To the faculty, faculty love their disciplines, and they love nothing better than sharing that, that academic discipline with, with their students, and there's no better way of doing that with research. I know all the faculty get involved in this, really see the benefit of it, and are really rewarded by it. And this benefits our college. When our students succeed, we will succeed. And it's been a rewarding experience for all of us, I think, that have been involved with that. Tracy, I'll, I'll turn it over to you and, and, and please add, add your, your thoughts here, if you could. Yeah, as Rick said, I was at Valdosta State University for 22 years. And for the last 20 of those years, I was actually on the Undergraduate Research Symposium Committee and uh, I saw what an amazing opportunity it afforded our students and um, wanted to work with Rick to emulate that here. And we did a really good job of getting it up and running our first year. And then COVID hit, so we had to uh, pivot as we all had to pivot. And so we're just back this year, having missed last year, uh, coming up with ways that we can still do this. This emulates a professional conference that many people in academia attend, uh, but in a much lower stress environment. And so we hope that all students and faculty will get involved this year and uh, submit an abstract and participate in the actual virtual symposium that we're hosting this year. As, as Dr. Woodward said, we, we had a very successful 2019 symposium. Uh, unfortunately, yes, 2020 was kind of interrupted by COVID. But yeah, we are looking forward to a great, great virtual count, uh, conference in 2021. We have a video from the 2019 symposium. And if I may ask, uh, Kelly, if, if you can run that video, that'll be great. Here's a closer look at the TCC Symposium of Undergraduate Research. Mars diameter is 6,790 kilometers. Why wait till grad school to start showcasing how much you've learned? Students at Tallahassee Community College are already presenting research and defending theories. Thanks to an innovation grant funded by the TCC Foundation, 
The educational value on campus has been given a higher impact with the new symposium for undergraduate research. Most colleges and universities are engaging in high impact practices. High impact practices is anything where a student does something other than within the classroom, other than, than having you know your basic lecture, things of that nature. This allows them to go outside that realm, to be able to develop a project on their own that is, is supplemental to what they do in the classroom. And this will transcend the classroom. It will follow, follow it with them. We're seeing this for study abroad programs. We're seeing high impact practices for any sort of extra extra event outside of class. And this is an example of that. We want to see TCC engaged in this. It helps our students, whether they're going to transfer to university, whether they're going to go on to another career, but this is going to help them engage a lot better in terms of their, their academic endeavors. We do know that students who come to college, if they get involved right away in undergraduate research, that they're more likely to be retained, they're more likely to be successful in the college, they're more likely to go on to finish their undergraduate degree and even and go on to graduate school. The symposium was open to all disciplines across the college, with presentations ranging from art and jewelry creation to music recitals to STEM, social science, and genealogy. I mean, it was just an incredible opportunity to do some higher level research and put together a presentation and a paper and explore findings. I was talking about the informal economy, uh, otherwise known as the System D economy. Uh, it's essentially all of the trade that takes place outside of government knowledge, regulation, and taxation. It's uh, definitely enhanced my research skills. Uh, absolutely, this, this is a topic I've uh, been really interested in for quite some time, and it was just an absolute pleasure just to be able to present to an audience, uh, you know, and just actually like talk about it in a higher academic uh, setting. Faculty have, have encouraged students, and students have really risen to the occasion. I've been really pleased with the TCC community and how they've, they've stepped up to this. They really have. If the bottom line is to display impactful results, year one with a symposium for undergraduate research shows a big benefit. This is beneficial to the college because this is going to benefit our students as they transfer. A lot of our students transfer to FSU, they're going to be more prepared than the actually FSU students at that point. That helps our institution. That helps TCC. The better our students do, the better we do as an institution, as a college. We want to advance our college through our students. This is actually the first time I've actually ever seen something like this at an undergraduate uh, institution. I know it's a lot more common at graduate schools, but um, man, at a community college, this is just an incredible opportunity. Thank you, Kelly. We're really excited about the 2021 symposium. While it's going to be virtual, it's not going to look exactly like that, but it's going to have a lot of the same features and you can expect a lot of the same benefits of it. Two very, very important dates to, to remember, please. Your abstract submission deadline is going to be February 19th, 21. The symposium itself is going to take place March 25th in, in 2021 on the Thursday. Kelly, I'll turn it over to you. All right, thank you. And thank you all for being here today, too. We really appreciate it. All right, so some of you, especially if you have never um, done this type of project, maybe you're just getting started with the research, we just wanted to give you some steps for, you know, where, where do I even get started with this? So I'll give you a few steps and, and a few ideas. So first of all, you can identify a paper or project or creative work that you've already completed. So it could be something that you've done this semester or, or last semester. It could be something you're working on now or some other project you plan to complete before uh, the March 25th uh, symposium next year. So your work should be research-based. So it could either be an original uh, research study you've done or reviewing other research studies um, that have already been conducted um, for some examples. And it should contain references to the other works you consulted uh, for your project as well. That's something I know our first symposium was last year. That's something that I was hoping to see more um, this next year. Being a librarian especially is to see more, more the references to, um, to those uh, other sources. So first off, you need to select a faculty advisor or a faculty sponsor to assist you um, in coming up with the project, um, maybe identifying a project you've already done for that course, um, as well as writing and submitting your abstract, which I'm gonna talk about a little bit uh, later on in the presentation. So this could be um, one of the faculty from the class you're currently taking, or maybe a course that you've taken um, previously um, at TCC. So that's the first thing you'll wanna do is identify a faculty member to work with you on your project. All right, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Benet to talk right. about the different types of research projects. And I'm gonna right. stop sharing so he can share. 
Thanks, his Kelly. Screen. Yep, you're welcome. Oh, I, I don't think I have uh, screen sharing capability though. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought Dr. Gordon gave everyone the ability, but I'll, I'll see if I can change the settings. So now you should be able to. Okay. Yep. Yes, there it it might take a second. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, so I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the categories and the types of projects uh, that you can submit for the research symposium. We divide it into four uh, different types, and this might also kind of give you an idea of, of what you might submit um, for, the, uh, for the symposium. I'm just going to really briefly talk about um, each type of project, um, each of the categories, and we do these at different times of the day. Um, during the uh, during the research symposium, so um, the first category is an oral presentation, and um, you could really turn any kind of research project you've done uh, into an oral presentation. That could be a paper that you wrote for a class. Um, that could be um, you know could could be a science experiment. You know, I think the paper for a class is probably the most the most common thing. Um, you can choose to read a paper or you can speak with the aid of a PowerPoint presentation. Um, and um, probably doing the PowerPoint presentation is a little bit more common, but um, in certain fields of study, it's more common at a conference to read a paper. And we'll talk a little bit about um, getting a faculty mentor later in, in the uh, presentation here. Um, and that's something that your faculty mentor might, might steer you toward one direction or the other. Um, so you, if you do an oral presentation, you'll present as part of a panel of speakers, and and um, that, that's good to emphasize because that it kind of freaks some people out. You know, the idea of kind of being at, at the front of a room, you know, and it's only them who's on. Um, you'll be at, even if it's a virtual room, you know, you're you're going to be together with a group of other students, and you'll speak for I think that's the next bullet point here. You'll speak for um, for 15 minutes. You'll have 15 minutes. Um, that is kind of a, a strict time limit. But that that you'll have because um, you know we have to kind of keep things moving through the day but um, you get 15 minutes um, there is a question and answer period at the end for the entire panel um, the entire group and I think the panel is uh, what usually four or five students um, uh, speaking at, at a time um, so it's five minutes for the entire panel and um, it's just you know general questions from the audience you don't have to you know you, you kind of never know what's going to be thrown at you you know and you, you don't have to you know feel like you you need to um, you know be able to be on the spot and say a lot you know in, in that case but um, but q a of, of five minutes um, we're going to show you, or I'm going to show you the program website in just a couple of minutes. There are some more specific guidelines for the oral presentations that we have also. Um, we also have two um, workshops that we're offering. One is done by one of our speech communications um, professors, um, just kind of on presentation skills and, you know, confidence and, and things like that. And um, I think we've also talked about adding one on, on PowerPoint as well. Um, and uh, so there's, you know, there's there's a little bit of support built in there for you um, as well. So um, that's the oral presentations, um, three more categories. Um, the second one is the uh, performing arts um, presentation. So you can also apply to perform a work of music or dance or theater um, or read a work of creative writing. Uh, that's another That's another area. Um, for any of these, um, we just want to emphasize that you still will need to submit an abstract. We, we mentioned that just a, a few minutes ago, but um, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. Um, and the abstract is going to be just a really short summary of what it is that um, you, uh, you intend to do in terms of the performance. Um, there's going to be a 10 minute maximum for all of the performing arts presentations and um, also you, you may be asked to provide just a brief overview of, of the influences that kind of inspired your, your performance. You know, if you're sort of kind of looking for the connection between research and, and performing arts, you know, that kind of makes that connection. So kind of what was it that um, made you perform this piece uh, of music or made you, you know, perform something from theater in a, in a particular way? Um, and then again, there are specific guidelines that we'll show you in just a couple of minutes uh, on the on the program website for that too. 
Um, the third category is a visual arts category. Um, so you can apply to exhibit an original um, work of art that you've done or a design uh, of some sort that you've done. Like with a performing arts category, you'll need to submit an abstract that describes your artwork in order to be considered. And some examples, you know, any kind of artwork, any, uh, you know, drawing, photography, jewelry, mixed media, film, any of those you can, you can uh, apply to exhibit. Okay. Um, so again, present the work at the symposium, um, be prepared to discuss the influences on your work, and again, specific guidelines like with the other categories on, on the program website too, we'll show you in just a few minutes. And the, uh, and the last category is a, a poster presentation. And so um, we'll show you some examples. The examples are best um, with these, but uh, you'll create um, some kind of visual display uh, of your research. Um, and that's using a PowerPoint or publisher. And the idea is it would be kind of like a, a one page, a, a big one page display of the research that you did. Um, and create, you know, kind of a visually attractive layout that communicates your research really concisely. Um, and be prepared to discuss your research um, with attendees and also maybe, maybe field questions. Um, again, specific guidelines for this and we're, we're still kind of figuring out how we're going to adapt this part, you know, to the virtual format, um, but that, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be disseminating more information about that, you know. Um, we may kind of do something with this together with the oral presentations, you know, as, as we're doing that virtual uh, symposium format, we're all kind of figuring out the virtual uh, format right now, I think for, for everything right now, right? Um, so those are the categories. Um, oh, and, and here uh, is just one example uh, of a poster. We've got other examples on the website as well. We'll show you where to find that in, in just a moment, um, but just to kind of give you a visual of what this looks like. It's kind of a one pager that really, you know, summarizes really well um, the research project that you did. Um, just a couple more examples, you know, just to, just to kind of give you a visual here. But again, we have examples on the website, you know, as well. Okay. Um, so, um, Okay, and then the website is, is going to be my other part of this, and then I'll, I'll turn it. I think uh, Kelly's going to take the uh, the next section. Um, uh, so we've we've got a pretty extensive website that we've put together. It's it's very much a work in progress. I I don't know if we said I, I think we said just a few minutes ago this is a new program at it's still a relatively new program at TCC. So, um, but we're we're building a pretty extensive website here. Um, just going to show you some images of, of what it looks like and where to find information and what kind of information you can find uh, on the website. So um, uh, toward the top of uh, the, the homepage, and, and I think you guys got the address there, it's tcc.fl.edu slash research, really easy to remember. Um, toward the top of the page there, you've got our important dates. So you have those, you know, the, the symposium is going to be on March 25th. Um, and abstracts are due February um, 19th. Um, we've also got um, that video that you just saw uh, for what that's worth too, you know, so you kind of have an idea of what this looks like, you know. Um, you've got our contact information there um, at the bottom, undergraduate research at tcc.fl.edu. Um, and then this link here that um, gives you a lot of the information about the guidelines for the different types of presentations and things like that. Okay, um, so I'll just show you a little bit of um, those guidelines and things. So uh, when you click on uh, how to participate, um, we've got, if you scroll down here, some really detailed guidelines um, about how to participate. The first thing, and we'll say a little bit more about this in just a couple of minutes, is to get a, a faculty advisor. So a little bit more information about that. Um, and then really detailed information about each of the four presentation styles here. Um, you've got guidelines over here on the right side of the page, and then there's also a rubric. We haven't, I don't think we've talked about the, uh, the prizes and the award categories yet, but we've, you know, there are awards as well for the, for the best presentations, you know, and, and best, uh, you know, best research uh, performances and all that kind of thing, okay. Um, so you've got the rubrics um, by which we judge and all the different categories. Um, and then um, some really detailed information on writing the abstract and, and we'll be coming to exactly how to do the abstract in, in just a minute. 
um, but just want to let you know that you've got those you've got really detailed guidelines here about how to write the abstract you've got um, uh, several examples I think um, here also of of uh, what we're looking for in an abstract and how to make your abstract competitive and then at the bottom of the page um, you've got this very it's very simple to um, to submit your project um, it's competitive uh, but we make it simple to to submit your project to us and you do that by just filling out this simple form um, right here and uh, i think that pretty well covers it for the website yep and then i think it's back to kelly right Yes, thank you. Sure. All right. Back to my slides here and then I can go ahead and share and just skip skip ahead to that section. But does anyone have any questions so far? Feel free to type in the chat and uh, let us know if you have any questions so far. Or you can speak it if, if you like. Hey, Kelly. Um I was trying to follow along on the website on my other computer, um, but I missed that the submission link. Um, yes, I'm actually going to be mentioning it when I talk about abstracts again, so I can show you on our website. Where okay. To go. Okay. <laughs> and I'll and I can bring up uh, bring up the link to um, to the website as well. I'm just trying to skip ahead to the slides, so I'm not uh, going. All right. Cool. Yeah, I heard John right. mention it at the bottom of the page. I just can't find it. So. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, go ahead and share again. All right, any other questions? Oh, and I guess I gotta, I gotta queue it back up again. All right, <laughs> if anyone does this question, just let us know. Thank you. Oh, and so let me first bring up the link to the website one more time for you. Um, Denise, let's see, there it is here. So tcc.fl.edu slash research will take you to our website and then get to where you submit the abstract. You're gonna go click on the button that says learn more where it says ready to get started. Then that should take you to that section. I hope that answer, answers your question. <laughs> It'll be under, under prepare and submit your abstract once you get to that. It's, it's right, it's right at the bottom of that page, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right, page, so we're going to... On, on that page, it says um, submit by February 28, 2020, so uh, it, it that is not the right date, so just right. be aware of that. Yes, we still have a few updates, a few changes that we still need to have made. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and turn over to um, Dr. Soldani to talk about her experience in being a faculty advisor and sponsor from sponsoring students. And um, we may or may not have a student here, um, Dr. Soldani, I think, uh, to present. Okay. So I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I told Kelly earlier, don't give me the screen share because I am going to like just take over then. <laughs> I have been integrating research into my classes for about five years now. Um, once I realized what an explosion of material there is available on digital archives and databases, stuff that there just wasn't when I was in grad school. So as I've been putting more research out, it turns out TCC is offering us new ways to have our students share. So I do appreciate how it's all come together. And I want to tell you guys really quickly that um, students, in my experience, they come to college to be challenged, right? And, and it takes a little bit to like oh, figure out how to challenge them. And it seems that that research is exactly where to do it. Um, a couple of years ago, a bunch of us in a faculty colloquium were all assigned a book called What the Best Professors Do. And um, I feel like they're brainwashing us, right? Like learn that. And, and really the point of the book was the best professors emphasize how your discipline thinks. So like they should leave my class knowing a historian would approach things like this. A biologist might see things differently. So we're not just a bunch of information, we're an approach. And so with that background, I have really enjoyed these past couple of years sending my students out to do, well, and I learned to not let them do what they wanna do. I start them all off with a death certificate from a complete stranger who died in, not in Florida. And I'm like, what can you find? And then after I send them out and they come back, I'm like, you did research. You went, you found something, you shared it, you told me how to find it. 
And once they get past that, I unleash them. And we have had some incredibly powerful experiences of students wanting to just stop lecture and be like, you guys, last night I found something. Can you check it? Is this right? Can he have two families? How can a person have a family in two different cities? You know what I mean? So I wanted to share that with you that, um, that sharing research and having things that they want to share should be an important part of anyone's education. Knowing that they um, that their opinions and their insights are valued are an important part of our institution's values. And um, I just look forward to what the next year is gonna bring. I should have like 50 students for you. <laughs> Thank you, Kelly. I don't know if Alicia's here. Is she? Okay, I had a student who was going to come and speak today. She was going to present last spring, and she's taking my class now. And, and she would have been an example of someone who was researching every single day. She actually hit a wall yesterday that something she was researching, the hospital burned down. And we're like, no, maybe the files were outside the hospital when it burned down. So, you know, the level of, of connection that you can have with your faculty when you do research with them is not the same that you would expect in another class. So I'm thankful for this. I hope more people embrace it. And um, it's become the best part of my job. It really has. It's Thank good to you. <laughs> yes, and, and even if your student wasn't able to be here, I just realized that we did have a student from last year who was in the video, if you were here at the beginning and, yeah, we and saw the that. So we did get to hear from a student who participated uh, last time. So, so that's good, but, but thank you so much. All right, so I'm gonna go on and talk to you about abstracts since I think this, this first part may be one of the most challenging. At least I know some students had some challenges last uh, spring when they were submitting. So I wanna make it, try to make it clear um, as far as what abstracts are and, and how do I go about writing it and submitting it. So this information actually came from my colleagues in the learning commons, um, Greg Schaberg and uh, Nadine McDonald did a presentation for the STEM students last year about abstracts. So these slides were borrowed from them. And a lot of the information also came from the uh, USC libraries. So basically what an abstract is, and a lot of you probably have seen an abstract before. If you have seen um, an academic journal article, feel free to give the thumbs up if, if you have heard of the word abstract or perhaps seen one at the beginning of a journal. Yes, I see at least one, yep, Chelsea. Thumbs up and Dr. Soldani, yes. So some of you I know have seen these already. So basically what it is, it's a summary of the major aspects of that, um, that work, whether it's a research study or a paper or whatever you're submitting, creative work. Um, and some of the things that are gonna go into that abstract are your overall purpose or themes for that study or paper or creative work. So what is your purpose? Like, why did you do this research? Um, what were you trying to find out? So what was your hypothesis or thesis of the study or the paper? Um, the basic design, so what exactly did you do? You know, was it, was it a survey you did? Um, was it maybe looking at some literature that um, others in the field have written? So basically, what, what did you do? And then your findings or trends, and I believe the website did say that you don't necessarily need to include that because Maybe you're not done with your research yet. Um, maybe you're not gonna have that finished until you present. So you can always talk about maybe the trends you've seen so far or what you expect to see. So those are things you would include in your abstract. So basically it is your brief summary, the researchers um, or creators interpretations or conclusions. So some of the tips they give are a good abstract should allow you to elaborate upon the each major aspect of the paper or the project, help the reader decide whether they want to learn more um, about your investigation or creation, include enough key information to make the abstract useful to someone who may want to examine your work. So think of it as maybe you're writing as like, you know, what draws you in, kind of like what, what's the hook that, that makes you interested. So you can ask yourself, if my abstract were the only part of my work I could access, what would I be would I be happy with the amount of information that's presented there? So that's to make your, your readers interested in learning more. All right, so they also recommend using an active voice when possible. Um, use concise and complete sentences and get to the point quickly. So it should not be you know, too long. 
and also not too short. We had some um, that were submitted last year where students uh, didn't follow all the directions and they didn't really include all those things that maybe were like one sentence long. So just make sure that you look at the website and all the details and make sure everything is included before you um, submit it. All right, so they say, of course, it should not be too lengthy, too much background information. So you're not gonna give us your whole research study in the abstract, right? Cause it's only gonna be a summary. So, um, and you don't necessarily have to give all your references to the other literature. I mean, you could generally mention, you know, this, you know, I looked at this through this database and this is, you know, one source I consulted. Like maybe if it's just general, maybe one source, but you don't have to list everything in that summary because otherwise, um, of course it would be too long. All right, so good abstract should not contain ellipticals like the dot, 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 or incomplete sentences. So you can always um, get in touch with our Learning Commons writing specialist and your faculty um, advisor to help you with the writing part and make sure it's correct before you turn it in. Um, so we shouldn't have things like abbreviations and jargon or terms that might be confusing. Um, other things like images or illustrations or tables and references to them because those are things you would include later in your presentation. So you don't need to include them all in your abstract. All right. And all that information, like I said, I gave my reference here. Actually, this is the Learning Cabin's reference um, where they found this information. So just kind of an idea of how you might do your references. And they can be in either APA or MLA format or Arabian style, whichever style that you choose to use. Um, but just let us know um, if you need more help with that. Um, so these are the requirements from the website. So you want it to look like um, this, uh, single spaced on a single page. Uh, we recommend 12 point font times New Roman, but um, I'm sure if you put it in different font, you know, we're, we're not gonna count you down. This just helps us for formatting for our program. It just saves us some time. Um, but it helps if it's formatted all correctly. So your um, abstract should just be one paragraph. So no longer than 150 words. Um, but of course, it I would think it would be longer than, <laughs> than one sentence. So I would think at least you know three sentences basically for uh, a paragraph. So the top left and right margin should be one inch and the bottom margin 5.5 uh, inches. Your first line will be your title of your project. So centered in bold using capital, all capital letters. And then the next line will have your name. And if you're in a group presenting, all of your presenters' names. And um, the divisions, so basically the, the subject area. So maybe if it was for an English class, you'd include the, the division for communications and humanities or whichever um, area it was for. And then each word there should be capitalized, followed by um, your email address. And if you have any other presenters, their email addresses in parentheses. And then um, your faculty um, sponsor, your faculty advisor's name, and then um, their department or division in bold. And just make sure that you submit them in a Word doc or a PDF, because we did have a few students this past uh, spring. I was helping to review the abstracts and they were in some different file formats that we couldn't open. So, so we were gonna, we'll contact you if for some reason, you know, you're missing some of this information or you're, we can't open the file. So this just saves us some time if you make sure that everything is uh, correct before you submit it. And here's one example that's actually on our website as well. And if you would like to look at other examples, we have several, so just let us know. Um, so we have the title of this, abstract, the Family and Medical Leave Act of 1993. It's all in caps. We have the student's name, Rebecca Julianne Lewis, uh, the Division of Communications and Humanities, her email address in parentheses, her faculty sponsor, Dr. David, pronounced Winder, I'm not sure if I pronounced it correctly, Communications and Humanities. Um, and then you can see that she basically tells what, what she did, right? So this paper, we know right away it's a paper. So what what kind of research is it? It examines the Family Medical and Leave Act. So basically what it is. And then what, what did she do? It traces the history of the legislation and you know, analysis addresses voting behavior. So right away we see you know, what, what was done and what, what did she look at? And then what are some statistics um, that she looked at and what did they show? And what, what did she determine based on that research? So yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward, like I said, just this one paragraph, and like I said, just make sure that it includes everything that's 
required. And that's why you have your, your faculty advisor too, to help you um, put this abstract together and look over it uh, before you submit it. Now, does anyone have any question about, about the abstract at all? I know that, uh, like I said, we just want to really want to make it clear this year because I know that some students some had trouble with it last last time. And this is of, often one of the most difficult parts <laughs> is just getting this part completed. All right, so again, um, how to submit it is on our website under the section. Once you click on learn more from the website, just go to the section that says prepare and submit your abstract and then it will take you through the different steps. Um, to submit it. And this is what the program cover looked like last year. I thought that might be nice to include because actually one of our students who um, participated last time uh, designed this, uh, helped us design the program cover. So this image was taken from a student's work from our last uh, symposium last year. All right, and if you do need more help with the actual research part that you're doing, so anything to do with um, research, if you need help um, citing your sources, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, Kelly Herm, you can call me at 201-6513. Or you can also, if you for some reason can't reach me, you can also reach out to our reference department and actually any of our librarians can help you with the research too. 201-8383, uh, you can also email me. Uh, hermk at tcc.fl.edu or we have a general uh, library reference email. It's just library at tcc.fl.edu. And then our uh, learning commons writing specialists, our point person is Greg Shaberg. And you can excuse me, call him at 201-8270 uh, or our um, learning commons main number. Um, if you can't reach him is 201-8195. And Greg's email um, is um, shaberg at tcc.fl.edu or just the general learning commons at tcc.fl.edu. And that's if you need any help with the writing, especially with the abstract or any other, other the writing that you're doing for your project. And also with citations too, he can also help with that. So just wanted to let everyone know who, who to contact if, if you need more help. All right, so I will go ahead and turn it back over to uh, our deans to tell us kind of what, what to expect on this symposium date, but does anyone have any question before we get to this point? I didn't see anything in the chat, but I just wanted to make sure before we continue. Okay, I'll turn it back over to them. Thank you, Kelly, I appreciate it. And thank you, Welcome. everyone, great, great job. And, and again, we, we're really glad all of you are here and, and, and anxious to learn a little bit about undergraduate research. Uh, certainly on the day of, I think we're going to be, certainly it'll be virtual, there'll be a Zoom conference, there'll be a website that will coordinate us and be able to direct us to the different panels that we'll be able to participate in. And if you're doing a panel presentation, that panel will be in, in the Zoom. You'll be able to present to uh, not only your fellow panelists, but whoever's uh, running that one specific panel, as well as people jumping in and asking questions and things of that nature. It'll be a full day event. I think it's going to be an exciting event. Uh, I, at this point, we're all so good with Zoom. I don't think that's going to be too much of a challenge to negotiate and, and be able to, to, to get around within, within the uh, conference itself. But we're looking forward to it. Uh, and I, I, I think it's going to be an exciting event. Uh, we did a very good one in 2019, and I think this will surpass it. Uh, Tracy, can, uh, would you like to add anything else? Yes, um, one of the things that you need to know is that we actually print the posters here on TCC campus. We were awarded grant money and we bought a huge printer that allows us to do that. So you just have to turn in your um, poster to us and we will print that up for you. Also, we award prize money for the top three papers or presentations in each category. Uh, there will be top three uh, awards giving. We do have judges that will be judging as we go along. And the first award will receive $350. The second award will receive $100. And the third place winner will receive $50. And so there is some incentive to put out your best works because you can win some money. We also give out a medal and a certificate for participating to all participants for participating in the symposium. So I encourage you all to work closely with your faculty sponsor and get your great work turned in as soon as possible and look forward to seeing you on the symposium day.
Are there any questions that we can answer at this point? Please, we, we look forward to seeing everybody on, on the 25th. It'll be a great event. Thank you so much for your, for your interest, your participation here. Thank you for, for all of you and hosting this as well. Fantastic job. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Any other any comments from any of our uh, presenters? I know Dr. Gordon, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself or say anything, but if anyone else has anything else to say, feel free. And otherwise, we'll just see if there's any questions and you can, you can contact us if you do have gen any general questions about the symposium, undergraduate research at tcc.fl.edu. Yep, you're welcome, Chelsea. Thank you.